we can state a very simple mathematical relationship that applies to a lever. And the math is simple, as it is with all the simple machines. So you can draw this picture into your notes. Here's your lever, and you've got one distance over on one side, we'll call it D1, and another distance on the other side, we'll call it D2. And the downward force here, F1, because we're at a longer distance, can balance a much larger downward force there, we'll call it F2. And just to keep the math simple, we have force 1 associated with distance 1, and force 2 associated with distance 2. And here's the math, it's real, it's real easy. It's F1 times D1, so this force times this distance is equal to F2 times D2, that force times that distance. And you should see how this math works. If you have a really large force, F2, acting at a smaller distance, well, over on the other side, this product has to equal that one. So if the D1 over here is bigger than the D2, then you can multiply the D1 by a smaller force and get the same overall total product as you have on the other side of the equation. So using a large distance or a large lever arm allows you to balance a, a giant force with a smaller force. Now in, in the diagram I've drawn here, F1 and F2 are both forces acting down on the lever. These would be like the coins acting on the ruler in the earlier example. They exert a downward force. There's another way to think about the forces. And this is a good way to think about it if you're thinking about actually using a lever to do something. So here's a, here's a lever, and let's say we want to actually lift a mass. And so what we're going to do, we're going to put a downward force here, F1, that's going to cause the other end to go up, and it's going to pick up this mass over here. So here's some heavy object that we're trying to lift. And draw, you can draw F2 like this. And instead of thinking of the forces acting on the lever, like we had in this diagram, down here you can think of these forces as an input and an output. F1 is the force that we push down with on the lever. That's the force we put in to the lever. So that's our input. And then F2 is what we get out. That is the force that the lever then exerts upward on the mass. So we put in this force F1, and as a result, we get F2 acting up on the mass. So instead of lifting the mass, we push down on the lever, and the lever lifts the mass. The result is here, and the reason we use the lever is because F2, this or this mass, might be really heavy. It might require a large F2 to lift it, but we can lift it using a smaller force F1 because we make use of this larger distance. That larger distance on our side allows us to get out more force than we put in. So F2 is the output force, and it, it ends up being bigger, as in, the, in this particular case, the way I've drawn the lever here, with a larger distance on the side of F1, F2 ends up being uh, a larger output force, and that's obviously useful. You can lift something much heavier than you could otherwise lift. Now there's a trade-off though. When you get out a larger force, F2, than you put in, it seems like you're getting something for free, but you're really not. You get out a larger force, but you only get it for a smaller distance. In fact, if this lever arm is twice as long as this one, then you only have to push half as hard over here to get as much force F2 as you need to lift it. So you've doubled your force, but the mass only ends up moving half as far. So we get a gain in the force, but the cost is we get a smaller output distance.